right, so welcome back. Uh, this is number six of the Barrow Maze Stone Hell combination game that we're doing. And uh, when we last left our intrepid adventurers, uh, they had uh, gone adventuring basically through that uh, outer kind of gatehouse at the edge of the box canyon. Um, they had uh, had some problems with a few different enemies, uh, some stuff that they kind of figured out, some stuff that they might not have figured out. And uh, they definitely had some trouble with goblins that ended in a little bit of hilarity. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys ended up, um, you know, basically getting back to almost where you started, but, you know, going in a serotipus, yeah, that word. Uh, route uh, and uh, you know kind of meeting where you were in the middle um, any questions or anything before we get started uh, I found a satchel of blacksmith tools right you did okay so that was something that was there so definitely something you found I thought it would be up your alley so was it any other questions i go okay all right then uh let's see let me get some stuff going here all right so let me pull you guys over to the correct map so. Oh, uh, did we explore the uh, top of that wall? Like the last no, floor? Not yet. No. Uh, that was, I think, your plan um, going forward. All right. I think you guys are on the right map. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this was the room that had the bees in it originally, or the wasps, bees, wasps. Um, and um, it was also the room that you kind of trapped the goblins in and they got really stung. The room to the south of you was the area in which um, had the kind of trap doors that you would, uh, or the, yeah, the kind of like slots that you would drop rocks on people's heads. And then... Um, um, and then the room south of that even was the one that was kind of collapsing out from underneath it. Um, where would y'all like to go? To remind you, to give you uh, some spatial awareness, um, it's 10.30 in the morning on March 18th in this world. So 10.30 a.m. Your lantern lasts until 11.30, because um, I had that written down. So you still have an hour's worth of light in the land. Um, you said can we? Oh. Uh, it's, you said ten thirty at night, right? Oh, morning. A. Morning. A.M. Morning. Okay. Um, if we uh, can't we like turn off the lantern and save that hour? You can, but you'd be in the darkness here. Uh, do you guys want to go to the top of the uh? through this uh, staircase to the top of the uh, wall and see what's up there? That's sure. Just that we can save a bit of uh, uh, lantern fuel? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, oh, oh, crap. Uh, guys? Yeah. Oh, no. No, that's, that's fine. Uh, remember that Arnie is carrying a massive cask of wine. That is true. So that slows him down significantly. Do you want to leave the wine just right by the stills? And, uh, I, I'm yeah. thinking we might want to drop it back off at room four before we do this, just that it's safe. How would you do that? Uh, either most likely down the ladder. 
Arnie because like, he has it the cask tied to his back. Right. Well, hold on. Um. I yeah, want Arnie, to, Arnie wants to just drop it here and then deal with this stuff on the roof and then we can carry sir, it. Later. Uh, okay, that's that's fine. You you basically just plop it down and uh, you guys are going to head up to the roof? Uh, sure. Yeah, through this stairwell. Okay. So uh, you get to the top. It's kind of rusted shut, but a, a little bit of like, you know, um, good old-fashioned uh, shoulder grease will uh, take care of that. So, Arnie. Pretty much. And you pop out. Give me one second to reveal some areas. I don't know why, but I just have a really, really bad feeling that this is going to turn out like that giant bridge from Dark Souls 3, where there's just a massive demon up there. He's not that hard. I mean, you're right, but... That's correct. You are right. So, um... Let me see here. Give me two seconds. So, all right. Ooh, box text. Uh, you open the swollen rainwater trap door. Um, as you step out onto the balcony, a cool, stiff air comes across the land. Before you sits a large red monster with a forked tail and horns growing from its head and wings sprouting from its back. It has flame uh, jetting from its eyeballs, and it says your soul is mine. Okay, we would. I would like to go back. Arnie would like to go back down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's not a demon there. I just thought that was really funny. So take everything I said minus the demon, and but you pretty much have what's there. So you're on the top of the wall, um, and um, for the most part, it, it, it's empty. Um, it's oh, there. the hole. So the holes on the other side, that's E. So yeah, that's the hole that you were, that you saw earlier um, in, in that room where it was leaking. Hello? I think that might be Chris joining us. It is Chris the man. What's happening? How goes it? Hello. What's going on? I'm having some issues with my mouse, so hold on one second. No problem. All right, come here. Mama, give us some. You do have to imagine that this whole thing up top is flat. Um, you know, <laughs> where you see those dotted lines and it says, see, that's the pathway that you went in, but it's completely paved mm -hmm. over at the top. So this is all um, just one big, you know, long um, top. Is there anything up here, like a chest or like bows or anything? There's bird droppings, if you find those interesting. Uh-huh. Is the, what is the, uh, what is the ground up here made of? Is it stone or is it yeah, wood? Yeah, it's combination of wood and stone. So it's, it's you know, it's the, the building so materials. So what in the, the world made this hole? It was weather. It, it, it looked like it was rain. Just lots uh, and lots of rain over time. Uh, there was probably, what? you know, you're in the Forge Cleric domain and you got two dwarves with you. Y'all probably realize, like, probably there was some sort of um, imperfection in um, the, you know, the surface. Maybe it, one part got roughed down a little bit. Maybe someone dropped something. But it made an ever so small dip so when the rain came it didn't drain off like it was supposed to it just compiled in that area and then it just rotted the wood uh, uh. so in your expert building like 
I've got like three builders in essence here. I got two dwarves and like a forge cleric. So pretty much in any engineering feat that needs to be like figured out between the three of you, you can probably get it. Arnie would like to know what the dotted line is. That's the, uh, remember the tunnel that we traveled through to yeah. get in here? All right, and it's all just solid throughout. Yeah, it's yeah, actually it's solid on up. the roof. That's just showing you where the tunnel would be. All right. So there's nothing up here. That was a wasted effort. Can I check what's over, like, here? Can you what? What's Why over egg? there? Uh, I'm not seeing where you're clicking. I, I zoomed my mouse, I uh, zoomed the map out a little bit. Oh, you want to look over here? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, you know, what yeah. are these A areas? It's it's areas of rubble, right? Correct. It's where the wall has basically been collapsed. So you can okay. theoretically, you don't have to walk through that C area to get in. You could walk around and go over to A and then just walk through. Is there like an entrance, like a that no, over there? No, not, side? not no. that you can see. I'll actually reveal that, but it's not very impressive. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> and I'm guessing it's the same on the other side. Uh, yes. All right, there. I'll reveal that too to show you. Uh -huh. Huh. Um. So. I guess how about we? How about we go back down to the room, like put the wine back in the room, and just start exploring all of these uh. Ru ruins. Uh, so I'll second to bring the wine down. Um. Tie the tie with the rope and count uh put it down well as tonal is where the what is the, t the tunnel oh See? why by the tunnel because when we leave to go back to town is right there yeah I just, I just feel like it would be safer from weather and creatures in that room that we've literally been living in yeah. whenever we come here. That's up to you. I was just throwing a suggestion. Uh, what do, what do, uh, I've completely forgotten your character's names. Okay, shoot. Uh, Arnie and Thondon, what do you guys want to do with the uh, mask of wine? Uh... Okay, great talk. Uh, <laughs> Chris is muting. It's probably because his kid is, his kid is going, going a little going haywire. Arnie, haywire. Arnie would like to uh, just leave it somewhere that we could get it easily I'm later. Here. I'm here. I'm just a uh, kid with screaming. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was thinking leave it here. In the tunnel. Yeah, in the middle of sea. We could either leave the uh, cask of wine in the middle of sea or in that room that we've been living in. Which do you guys want to do? Back room. Arnie says. Okay. And uh, Thondon? Yeah, sure. Uh, I okay. guess we're leaving in number four. Okay. So... Um, so I'm going to say basically getting down from here, getting the casket down without breaking it. It's going to take a little bit of effort, but it's not beyond y'all's reason. It's just going to take a little bit of time. 
to get it in there, get it stored. Are you taking any other precautions besides just putting it in the room? I guess we can. Isn't there like a like? Yeah, chill? there's a, there's a secret room for that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can, can put it. You can put it in that secret room. <laughs> okay, so you put it in the secret room, close it up, and then you're headed back out to. Um, uh, do you guys want to explore the ruins or these two areas? Let's well, let's check uh, six, seven, eight, nine, then check that. Okay. Yeah, because that's a statue, and I really want to know what it's a statue of. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to say that in total took you guys 20 minutes to, to do all the stuff you're doing, and at this point, you're you're moving on. So it's 10.30 a.m.? It's 10.50 now. Oh, 10.50, all right. So 10.50 in the a.m. now, um, and you said you're headed towards number six? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, move everything over here. All right, so you head over here, and you look in. It looks like an old ruined uh, storehouse. So there was probably stuff here at one point, but it's I'm talking it's missing a roof. Most of the walls are, you know, in pieces and, um, you know, it's got grass growing up inside of it. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's been used for quite some time. Uh, you guys want to search it for leftover random loot? Sure. Okay. You guys can spend 10 minutes searching it if you want. Uh, yeah, can we? Yeah. Like I'm sifting fine. through the rubble. <laughs> All right, I'll roll it. All right. And 10 minutes go by. So it is now 11. And uh, you go by, and I'm talking 10 minutes goes by, and it looks like it's, you know, it looks like what it looks like. It, it looks like an old abandoned, um, like like I said, like kind of like a warehouse. Uh, uh. So let's check uh, what, seven? Yeah. Okay. I mean, because, like, last time we just passed all these places by, so. Seven looks identical to six. I'm talking, it's not identical in the sense that it's, like, identical, identical. But it's it looks like it was probably something for storage. It's missing a roof. The walls are crumbling. Um, and it's got grass growing up inside of it and all around it. Uh, and looks in general disrepair. Uh, next one. Yeah, sure. Number eight. Number eight. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not searching seven, just to make sure. I yeah, feel like not. we should search seven. You want to search seven? Yeah, let's search it. Yeah, okay. let's search it. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Doing some GM rolls. All right. You guys spend another 10 minutes in here. Doing that. This one is different. Okay. What if it's uh, just we're getting really bad rolls? <laughs> possibility as well. Um, you, it comes out very similar to six. So nothing. 
Yeah, no, nothing. Nothing in particular. Well, uh, I guess it's on to number eight. <laughs> so number eight, slightly different. Uh, it still has a roof. It still has like part of a door. Um, the walls are not completely crumbling, but there are spots in it. Um, it had holes in it, built in holes for windows, uh, but there are no windows. There's still the cross panes or whatever they are, the, the parts that hold the glass, but all the glass has been broken out. Um, and it looks a little more homey. Um, like there's a fireplace in it that isn't, you know, uh, that hasn't been used in a really long time. Um, it might have been some sort of officer's quarters or special, you know, VIP quarters, something like that. Um, but that's what you're looking at. It's still got a lot of grass that's grown up inside of it, but not as much due to the fact that it sells a roof. Um, so, you know, but it's still really run down. Uh, before we step inside, is it structurally stable? Yeah, yeah, it's stable enough. So. All right. I I want to knock on the door. Okay. You have to, like, well, at your height, it's fine, but uh, a human wouldn't be able to knock straight up because, like I said, the upper part of the door is missing. Uh, but the lower part of the door is still there, so you, you kind of knock on it. Um, you hear, you know, a knock. It kind of echoes throughout the box canyon. So there are many ghosts living in it. Cool. So I don't hear anything, like, kind of, like, moving around in there? You can spend some time trying to listen if you'd like, but nothing reacts to your knock is what I would say. Okay. So, how about I just shine some of my lantern, my lantern in? Sure. Through the giant crevice on the top part of the door. Okay. You shine it in. Um, like I said, it's it. You know, I described it already. It's kind of got like a chimney and. Um, a little bit more of a homey kind of feel to it. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, it's in general, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, not, uh, you know, it's still kind of, a, you know, thrashed. All right. So, uh, let's open the door, I guess. And go in. Okay. Yeah, and search it, maybe. Everyone you know, we search? still we still got to go over to that uh that uh place with all the bones and stuff and get all the loot from that area. Yeah, I'm with them. Do you guys want to search or do you want to not search? It's up to you. Yeah, let's search. That a yay from yeah. everyone? Yes. Okay. Doing some rolls. All right. You spend 10 minutes poking around. So it's what, 1130 by now? 1120. All right. Uh, you don't find anything in particular that's interesting or useful. I feel like we're just getting extremely bad rolls. Uh, this has been looted away. The house is already yeah. decrepit, also. Could be that. So, now onto the thing that I was really looking forward to that statue in number nine. All right, everyone headed over to nine. I just want to make sure yeah. I'm not speaking for or assuming. Sure. Okay. So, number nine. So, the as you're approaching it, um, it gives off the aura of a of a of a temple. Like a small temple, but a temple. Um, the the roof is still there somewhat. Um, it's got holes in it, 
that exposes kind of the flagstone floor. And some of the flagstones have kind of been like pushed up a little bit, so they're not even um, on the ground. Um, there is still, you know, a set of double doors that are there, but they're they're hanging open. And, um, you know, the walls are, um, like I said, partially coming down, but the, the, it's still structurally sound to go in. It's just, it's kind of been, it's, you know, it's had a, it's lived a, a full life, we'll say. And um, the one thing that draws your eye, especially you can see in there without the lantern because it's got holes in the roof and, you know, the light's shining down, um, is a, uh, a large statue that's probably 10 to 12 feet tall um, because this kind of has a pitched roof. And um, it's got a, it depicts a, a human male like in armor and um with uh, a sword and he's standing there kind of like motioning to the heavens like his arm extended to the heavens uh huh. does already know this, what, is, what yeah this i was gonna is ask is this the same statue in that uh war temple place that we see all over towns no the the picture of crom crom looks more crom this guy's dressed in like um like the armor of a knight crom is more you know in chain mail with a big beard and, a, and an axe and he, he's looking very kind of like uh you know uh, big big viking kind of looking dude um is a little more appropriate for crom um Whereas this is much more someone who's, um, you know, uh, someone that's a little more of the faith, uh, or not that, uh, someone a little bit more knightly is what I would say. Composed? Yes. So, is it structurally stable again? It is. I, I always ask this. And I know sometime it's not going to be. I, I've stated it is. It look it appears right. to be. Can I can I look around like the roof and the, the roof, like the ceiling and the walls just see if there's anything inside? Sure, let me take a roll here real quick. No. It looks good. Okay, I'll kind of Walk in cautiously. Are there oh, any pews or anything? Uh, if there were, they're pretty much gone. Right. Can I check the statue just to see, like, it's how well it's how the quality of the statue? Sure. All right. So people are starting to head in. So I'm going to put the yeah. token inside. Everyone is inside. Um, when you check the statue, um, it uh, one thing that you notice about the statue, it has a little bit of lichen on it here and there. It's got a little bit of um, like oxidation of like rainwater running down it. Um, but for this big kind of marble statue, you would assume if it's as old as the building is that it, and if it's taken kind of the weathering that the building has, it would look a lot worse. You could easily clean this statue, get a little soap and water, and brush the lichen and stuff off of it, and it would probably look just as good as the day that it was put in here. Oh, if only I had detect magic on me. I will say, because you're a cleric, um, when you come into the building, the building feels a little um, holy. It feels like a sanctuary. Yeah. That's Arnie would like to the statue of God. Arnie would like to donate the psychotropic mushrooms to the feet of the what the statue. Okay. Why, yeah. Arnie? You go ahead and put the psychotropic mushrooms down at the feet of uh, the statue. Is there so, any like white? Um, what I want everyone to do is make a um, a wisdom 
Yeah, go ahead and make a wisdom check, everyone. Um, oh, fuck. The cleric can make it at full. Everyone else makes it at half. So oh, you might have to adjust your numbers. Um, so it's, uh, so what do you mean by full and half? Well, you're rolling under your stat is oh, how you make a check. So <laughs> That was so, just barely. So uh, do I roll the wisdom my, uh, plus four? No, just roll your wisdom, and then whatever your wisdom is half, just tell me if you succeed or not. No, that's a fail both ways. So, um, uh, I Chris, I'm, I'm going to assume your wisdom is at 20. Um, and Eric, I'm going to assume your wisdom is at 14. No, my wisdom is a 13. I just didn't do the half thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no way to uh, write it into the code, but... Um, Eric, is it uh, your wisdom's on a 14, right? Arnie's wisdom is a 13. Oh, so close. Arnie almost knows. So, and uh, Gage, your wisdom, it, is it actually 17? Yeah, it's exactly 17. Okay. I, I usually do kind of power scores for those. That's kind of cool. So, you definitely know who this is, this statue. Um, this is St. Uh, Ross, R A S. Um, he's like a kind of a, a lower tier kind of demi demigodish kind of thing. He was a compatriot of St. Yig. Um, in fact, you know, the Whoa. tales are a little bit nebulous as to um, whether he was his companion or maybe St. Ross was actually his squire back in the day that then became his companion, something like that. Um, so, but St. Yig, you guys know from uh, Helix, there's a St. Yig place there. There's one in uh, in Iron Guard Mott. He's basically the patron saint of, and god of, um, you know, fidelity and, or not fidelity, but like charity, honor, all the paladin kind of virtues. So this is his compatriot, and his is specifically duty and fidelity. Like, that is his kind of gig. Like, he is loyal, and he does his job. So he is, St. Ross is the, the patriot deity or, or saint of duty, duty and fidelity. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, place my holy water down. Like, place, like, my flask of holy water down at his feet just like like just surprised that I've actually found a thing for him you know like a statue of him mm -hmm. and uh yeah so you place it basically on the, the plinth that it's sitting mm -hmm. on out of respect for him basically So, and since you actually rolled so good, like a power score, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of extra information to, to for that. So, um, he used to um, have kind of like St. Ross had a, like a, a knightly order and they were into like, you know, their just causes and, um, you know, doing their duty and their fidelity to their, their country and to the world. Um, and they were renowned for uh, taking oaths. So they would make like a broad um, proclamation. Like, you know, I'm, go I'm going to go and rid, you know, the land of hobgoblins. And I won't stop until every hobgoblin has been driven from the land. And then they were renowned for trying to keep those. They would either keep going and getting those, uh, you know, to, to, to the death or they would complete their goal. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, do I have any clue as to why his statue would be here? Um, you can make those. You, you've gathered a little bit of information at this place. You guys really haven't done research about this place. So you don't know 100% of what it is. So I would say if you, 
you might be able to put it together later if you garner more research about what this place is. Arnie would like to take back his psychotropic mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like we shouldn't uh -huh. ransack this place for loot. <laughs> We might want to. We might want to clean off his statue a little. Yeah. Could Arnie also donate like ten GP? Like, sure. I don't know what you're just gonna put it at his feet. There's no like box yeah. or anything to donate. He felt bad for taking the psychotropic mushrooms back. Okay. <laughs> like on, you know, on second thought. <laughs> Um, yeah, how long would it take to uh, clean off the statue a little bit? Ten minutes. Yeah. Do you guys want to help me clean off the statue a little bit? Sure. Because, like, even though I am, like, a cleric of another order, he is worthy of my respect. Okay, so you guys spend ten minutes cleaning up the statue. Uh, what time is it now? It's 11.40. So it's time for you guys to take a 10 minute rest. Unless you would like to push on. That's what well, yeah. All right. So that's that. You take a breather in the temple. Everything feels good. You feel calm here. You feel a little rested, um, you know, with a little work, this place could be really nice. You know, son, I just realized if we clear out this place, like, completely, we could probably turn this whole place into, like, a suitable base. And I was just thinking that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it would take an absolute massive amount of money, but we could, like, turn this place into a new town. I mean, as of right now, the only issue with the wall is the mage in there. It's the mage in there. That is true. Oh, yeah. 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 And then that, that room that they kept telling you to get out of. Yeah, that, uh, that ghost that uh, just doesn't care. Um... As you get up in levels, things happen. I'm talking what? I think Tasso's the close or close Oaken Shield. I think when he reaches ninth level, he can establish a you know a dwarf home. Oh wait, you can. <laughs> no, the rules. Know. Clerics can make temples. You know, dwarves make homes. Oh uh, wow! <laughs> half orcs <laughs> form bandit bandit mobs. Uh, where do you guys want to go next? Here or here or like further in? I was thinking here. Yeah, because we're closest and it'll probably lead to this thing. Yeah. Okay, so you guys want to head over to that direction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So after you take your break, you head over here. And... Give me a second. I need to go over here and adjust characters. So what, what is the, your marching order when you're going in? You can be two abreast. I, There's four of you. I just need to know. What is this actually, though? This? Oh, it's a standard map layout. That's an arch. 
Oh, okay. I was thinking me and uh, I'm at the back. Uh, Blackbeard should be first. Yeah, I'll be uh, uh, either second or first. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, so the dwarves are headed in first. Yep, sounds good. Okay. Either so, way, I'm always going to be last. You guys I've learned my lesson. <laughs> you guys step here, and you step in. And both dwarves, for the briefest second, I'm talking, it's almost like a flash. You see, like, um, like a glow in the room. And then as soon as um, your compatriots step up right behind you, the glow goes away. So uh, like a glow for us? Yes. Like in oh. infrared stuff, right? I'm sorry? Like infrared glow or like a glow, like ghost type glow? Uh, the first, like your infrared vision. Okay. <laughs> um, I rely. I kind of like whisper to Oni and uh, Sherwood to kind of be quiet. Something's ahead of us. Uh, I whispered back. You want me to turn on my lantern? Arnie, Arnie thinks uh, Arnie and Horace should step out of the cave. Give me two seconds. Uh, I was assuming the lantern was on. Is the lantern not on? Uh, not yet, no. Okay, then that changes the scenario. Um, so, never mind. Um, what I'm going to do is <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, I'm still looking outside. <laughs> All right. So you guys see the room um, in darkness because you're both dwarves. And, and Arnie can, can't he? And Arnie can now, too, because I thought the lantern was on. Over, on, over, hold on, I'm not on select. Over yeah. here on the wall is something written, but it is in, you can see it with your thermal vision, with your, your infrared vision. Oh. Well, well, write that down. Write that down. <laughs> write that down right <laughs> Both of the dwarves realize almost instantaneously that, um, what is it? Um, that it's uh, something that a lot of dwarves use. Some other species use it on occasion, but dwarves especially use it. And it's called flame chalk. Oh. So it basically is a chalk, like a stick of chalk. It's ever so slightly magical, like the, the, the barest drop of magic you can get. But all it is is it's just chalk that when you write on a surface, you can't see anything, but it gives off a tiny amount of heat. So if, you're, if you have infravision, you can see it, but only if there's no light. Okay. So what is it saying? <laughs> the note yeah. says R dash. So like it's like someone's name like at the top. Imagine like a letter. So R dash. And then it goes into the body of the letter. And it says, as agreed, the jewels await you two levels down in the chamber past the acolyte cells. Uh, how you deal uh, with the wasps is your own concern. Signed, M. Oh. This sounds like that Scooby Dooby show. This sounds like those two guys that were walking past the uh, fortress a long while ago. Did you guys forget about them or something? No. Is it isn't the wasp nest the one we cleared out earlier? Uh, I'm thinking there's another wasp nest inside of here. Okay. I want to walk in, 
cautiously. Can we? Oh, I have an idea. A beautiful, flawless idea. What's your beautiful, flawless idea? <coughs> um, what if we have one of the dwarves, like, using, uh, like, a uh, brush or something similar, uh, wipe off all that chalk into a container so that when we get back to town we can basically like compress it back together into another into a thing of chalk uh, I'm talking, it's like chalk on a chalkboard i'm like you're not gonna be able to compress uh, enough chalk to uh to do that uh all right never mind then I wanted to kind of slowly, uh, slowly, cautiously start walking in the room. Okay. Give me. Uh, you guys want me to turn on my lantern yet? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, I. Actually, no. Turn. Keep the lantern off. I can't see. If we get into trouble, we'll tell you to turn it I'm on. I'm literally just standing right here. Tie a rope to Arnie and hold on to the rope. <laughs> Fine, I won't turn it on yet. So, what are you guys give, doing? Give me three seconds. I'm actually creating something so you guys know oh. what it is. So, oh. It's just taking me a second to... Get it in. Oh yeah, uh, just a suggestion to you guys. Look up at those ceilings whenever you enter. All Good right. suggestion. Did you guys do you guys see the flame chalk note? Uh, uh, no. I, oh, yeah. uh, I I don't because I'm blind to uh Yes, do the dwarves and the and the half orc see the, the flame chalk note? Yeah, it'll load for me. I just want to make sure that y'all have it. So. What spell do I have right now? I know I have like one left. So it's now in the handouts if you guys want to look at it at any time. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So Wait a second. Is the spell that I have left purify food and water? I think so. The uh, other thing okay. I, I failed to mention is you see a glow coming from this direction as well. Uh, what's the sheep like? Uh, Where was I, it? It's just it's just light. So you see a glow coming from over here. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let me. So, there's nothing on the ceiling that they can see with their infrared, right? Yeah. So you start seeing a glow kind of coming from. There, this is like a. It's starting to go down a hallway. Okay. That uh, sounds like that's X marks the spot. You guys want me to turn on my lantern now? Sure. Go no. ahead. Uh, I'm gonna light up the what's left of the lantern, like that last hour. Of lantern fuel. Okay. Um, everyone, go ahead and make an intelligence check for me. Okay. Ah. Ah. Everyone failed. No. Oh wait, toss us succeed. <laughs> I. Almost, almost didn't make it. So I am so surprised I didn't. So, like with any of your roles, I would have. <laughs> the one thing that you kind of think about, um, Oak and Shield, is so he flicks on the lantern and the flame chalk disappears because in the light you can't see it. But the glow from that hallway does not disappear. 
Well, I mean, yeah, we would have assumed it was a fire. Or a torch or something. That's... Okay. Let's, uh... Go... Oh. Uh, before I forget, what is this? What is what? This. A is door? it a doorway? It's a door. Oh, it's a door. All right. Here, let's let uh, Taza. What were you gonna do? Or yeah, open shield. Sorry. I was planning walking, kind of cautiously looking around, uh, like the room to the corner where the light is. Good plan. Yeah, yeah. Let's move forward to the light. Arnie will back you up. All right, so you guys are moving towards that light over there. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, give me a second. I got to get some uh, ducks in a row. So you come around the corner. Boom. And that glow begins to be a bit brighter. Um, go ahead and um, everyone roll a d6. You want to roll not a one or a two. <laughs> <laughs> the first <Yeah>. two. <laughs> <laughs> everyone. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, wait, wait! I haven't rolled yet. Uh, wait, how do I roll? Is it the other way around? Just use the the bar. There's a thing on the left that you can use it real quick. Where? There's a dice dice uh, icon in the upper left hand corner of the map. Oh, how have I not seen that? So just click the d6. Oh, that. <laughs> okay, so as you round the corner, um, basically the glow from this. So what I'm going to say, because this is how all oh, the it's glow down, bugs, is you see a really large uh, beetle, and it's chewing and eating what appears to be um, a, a baby goat, like a mountain goat, oh, a lamb. Oh, the kid, a bit, a goat. A, ah, kid, yeah. yeah, that's what it's called. And um, how big is it? It's pretty big. Like, let me see, two and a half feet. Oh, that's not that big. So, and it's got like these three like glowing um, glands, basically, on its head. And when you guys come around the corner, it hisses and flutters its wings and it, the lights become really bright. So the three of you that have like infravision, your eyes were going from this infravision-y state to a not so infravision -y state. And you're like, ah, and like it hurts. The one of you that doesn't have infravision, you're like, uh, you're fine. You're like, oh, your eyes adjust pretty quick and you're able to respond. So, the other two of y'all, uh, all three of y'all are surprised, except for Horace, who is not surprised. Oh, God. So that's how that goes. Um, Horace, roll a d6 for initiative now to see oh, if you no. or it goes first. Oh, you didn't see my roll, but you rolled a four. But um, are you casting or no? Uh, no. Okay. I'm, I'm slinging. What do you intend to do? Oh, you're slinging? Uh, yeah, sling. All right, so it runs, it flies up to y'all. It goes first. Um, I'm going to roll randomly who it attacks. So... Oh, wouldn't it be attacking the guys in front? In theory, yes. Uh, yeah, I guess it would. It'll be one of the two of you. So... Chris. Yeah, Chris. 
You're getting attacked. Oh, great. Okay, so roll a d20. Roll a d20. Uh, your armor class is what? Uh, a two, if I remember. Let's All right. to check. Yeah. Uh, what the hell is it? Uh, uh, uh. Should be way on top. There it is, two, yeah, two. All right, so you need to roll four better. Okay. There we go. All right, Shit. so it the beetle kind of crashes into your shield, and it's holding on to the shield, uh, but you're good. Um, so it did not hurt you. Um, the, There's no negative to being surprised? No, no, you can defend yourself. Okay. Um, you're just not able to attack. No problem. The It's not so much that you're caught flat-footed as, as you are just not prepared for a fight. Um, yeah. And um, Horace, you get to make an attack. Uh, sling. Okay. Do I get ahead. a bonus to it from it being so close? Yep, you get a plus one. Ah, okay. So threshold modifier one? Correct. Oh, well. You definitely hit it. It just <laughs> it dinks off its antenna. So, and Wouldn't that uh, it's, injure it like a lot? It's flying around. All right. Um, Go ahead, uh, Arnie, roll initiative for me. That's a D6. Yes, please. Oh, no. Oh, All right. no. So the beetle goes again. Um, it's got everyone. Uh, it's got the front two as a target. It's going to stay with you, um, Thondon. So go ahead and roll to see if you can avoid getting hurt. Okay. Yep. No problem. You, you do. So now you're a little more aware. So now you're kind of like trying to push it off your shield, like get off, get off, um, as this thing is fluttering at you. Um, all right, it's y'all's turn. I'm going to use my sword to attack it. Try not to injure the uh, white sacks. Because. Oh, okay. Well. Does that mean London gets hurt? It, no. So you roll, try to, to you basically whip it completely as it's being moved on the shield in front of it. So no strike for you. And uh Thondon, go ahead and make an attack. All right. I will swing with uh, Dragonheart over here. I uh, that hits. Yes, that hits. And we make that... good use of Dragonheart. Yeah, that definitely hits. Arnie doesn't use it. Please tell me you didn't rupture the light sack. Uh, well, no. I'm sure Ryan will tell me. I didn't. I didn't do a careful strike, so Ryan can roll. You, uh, you managed to basically fling it off the shield and uh, you pin it onto the ground with your body weight and just start stabbing into the side of it like, die, die, die. Um, <laughs> that's not what I would do. <laughs> and it is it gives a last <clears throat> like hiss and, and uh, dies, you know, heals over. Is it still glowing? Yeah, it's still glowing. Guys, you know what that means? The, the light. Uh, can, can one of you just lop off its head? Arnie can. Yeah, Why? can you just lop? So, Free light, so I can turn off the torch. The Yeah, I don't... Light. How big is the beetle again? Uh, it's the about whole two thing and, is yeah. two and a half feet. Yeah. So, like, the head is what? Half a foot? Yeah, I'm talking. It's It's got three orbs on its head that, um, whatchamacallit, 
um, that glow. You can try to cut them out if you want. It's just going to take a little bit of time. You want to do that? I mean, we could, but it would be so much quicker to just lop off the head and carry it by the antennae. Mm -hmm. Up to you. Uh, sure. Let's cut them out, I guess. Okay. Yeah. You can definitely do that. So sure, I'm sure that takes some time, right? Takes yeah, ten minutes or so to do. So like. Like, the reason I didn't want to cut them out is because I was worried that we could damage them by cutting them out. Now, if you take your time, I'm talking if you tried to make it quick, you might have a problem. Oh, yeah, let's take our time. Arnie would li like to do that. Arnie would like to do something else. So you're able to, to kind of pop out... Uh, three of these glowing kind of balls. They're probably about the size of a golf ball, but they give off enough light to be considered a torch. Okay. Do they last forever, or how do, do they run out of juice? They, you don't know. Um, oh, okay. So you'll you'll have to uh, consider that. Got it. Um. Well, are they always on? Like, yeah, they, yes, you they can't are. turn them off. There's, there's no All right, could Arnie get one? I didn't um, hear that. Could could Arnie get one? Yeah. I mean, I have a lantern, so if you guys want to carry them, you can. I was thinking mm -hmm. I'd just maybe put one in my lantern so I don't have to turn it on. Arnie's going to call it a glowing sack in the inventory. That's roughly what it is. All right. A glowing gland. All right, I'll, I'll use that better. Um, gland sack. Okay, do you guys want to head out, out now? Uh, is there's there anything else in this room? There's a door. Yeah, there's a door right there, but is there anything else in this room? The, the goat, right? Yeah, there's, there's a dead goat. Uh, is it rotten? Um, no, it's pretty fresh. It probably stole it to eat it. So it's not cooked. So you guys want to bring that back with us when we leave? You want to go? Let's remember where it is. Yeah, it's right. That could be five. a ration. Yeah, we could use it for rations, like if we cook it up. Okay, let's go into five. <laughs> oh, that is where we... That's where you out. guys were. It's it's a plain <laughs> stone room. Yeah. Oh, okay. And let's, so, go, let's go back to two and go through that door. By the way, I, I should have revealed this earlier, too. Sorry. Oh, hold on. What? Trying to reveal it, it's not being good there. Oh. Yeah, that's some useful information. Sorry about that. But there you go. I won't go into the door. You're gonna try to go in? Yeah. I thought uh, wait. First should we check if there's someone on the other side, like listening? Let's check over here. Uh, you guys want to check? Do you going to check the door, or do you want to check the hall? I'll check the door. Okay, so Tasa okay. wants to check the door. Anyone else want to do anything different? I'll yeah, I'll cover him. I'll go with him to the door. Okay, Arnie will cover him. Sure. Right, so you, yeah, you guys are covering the door. door. You um, check the doorknob. The door appears to be stuck. <laughs> this looks like a job for Arnie Abelgut. Oh, there you go. Gonna bash the door down again. First, should we like listen to it, or are we just gonna let him bash down the door? How about somebody listen 
How about Horace listen while Arnie and the crew go over here and check out the hallway to make sure nobody flanks us? Okay. Do y'all want to do that? Sure. Okay. So, Horace, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put a token there. Um, there you go. That's you for now. What is that? It's just a placeholder. It's it, it's it's a you know it's a thing, but it's a placeholder. So that's uh -oh. you. The party is going over I here. I feel like we're going to run into that thing behind that door. Oh no! I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of DM do you think I am? The kind who wants to kill you? Uh, yes. Sometimes. Sometimes you know. All right. So I'll go with the party first. Um, you guys head over here. You get to um, this room, and um, there's a bunch of um, relatively fresh, uh, discarded like wrappers, like some like what you guys would wrap your uh, your rations in. Um, there's a, a spot that looks like it's uh, like burnt a little bit with some. Um, uh, like pieces of um, like um, where a campfire would have been, like where all the, the the ash is. That's what I'm looking for. That that word, ash. Um, and there's like uh, a couple broken bottles that look like they probably had some liquor in it. Um, and then there is a um, like a, a a bed litter that's over there, like you know a bed roll and stuff. That's there. Okay. Yeah. Is, so, is it a dead end, though? Is it like a closed off room? It is a closed off room. Oh. Right. Well, I want to take one of my rations and throw it kind of in, in the middle of the room. Okay. So you're throwing a ration into the middle of the room. So while this is happening, I'm going to go back to, to Horace. So you're listening at the door. Uh, yeah. I like how you picked the non-demi-human to listen at the door. <laughs> With your really yeah. bad ears, go ahead and listen. It's like a joke well, that the other three of you are playing on. Him. Well, Arnie <laughs> doesn't even have ears, so... That's true, but he still hears better. Um, so, all right, so you're listening at the door. Uh, you do not hear anything. Yeah, no shit. Okay. <laughs> Arnie can go back and listen at the door. It's going to take another 10 <laughs> minutes. This is while this is all going on. Everything's about time. Well, I mean, let's check out four. And then if we go back, we don't really have to listen. Because if anything goes down, then we're all going to have to deal with it anyway. Okay. Right? So, what could go wrong? So, uh, Open Most Shield, you tossed... Lost. Uh, ration into the middle of the the, the floor. It, it's sitting there. Okay. <laughs> so I kind of just go in and grab it cautiously. Okay. Arnie would like to check the room for traps and uh, treasure. Okay. You can check for one or the other. Treasure. Okay, so you're looking around for treasure. Um, what are yes. the two dwarves doing? Um, I mean, the, the room is like empty, basically, so I'm just going to go back, you know, like, like I don't know. like I, I want to check go the back walls. and laugh at the pathetic human trying to listen through a door. All right, so you're trying to check the walls. Yeah. Is Horace still concussed trying to listen through a door? No, 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 I don't have the concussion anymore. He, I'm concussion. Just, he, he slept that off. He's just dumb. I'm okay. very weak. <laughs> What's everybody's HP? You want to name it off? Uh, I have three HP. Oh, snap. What's your uh, cleric spells? You could you probably use some of them now. I have purify food. That's yep. it? That's it. All right. <laughs> he blew through all of his. I'll go back to the tube, I guess. 
All right. So I didn't. Know. Was, Arnie didn't catch that. Know. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and everyone just pull your tokens onto the board where you're at. Even though these are 10 foot squares, we're just going to use it a little bit more. So pull your tokens on. Perfect. Okay. So, Arnie, didn't you say you're searching for treasure? Yeah, I should be in there. Okay. So while you guys are searching for treasure and doing that, um, you guys are over here kind of listening at the door and doing stuff. The... What? What? Oh, is that... A, what the hell is that? So, you catch a glimpse at the archway oh, oh. walking by uh, one of the biggest bears you've ever seen. Wait, that's a bear? That's a bear. Oh. It's a big black bear. By one of these. A black it's a large, large black bear and it's like looking and kind of sniffing around and you know, Aren't hanging out. are black bears like the smallest bears in North America? That's why I said it's really big. Let Arnie take this for its thing. Arnie, you are searching for treasure currently. Yeah. Okay, so. yeah. I, I can, is there enough time for me to give it the goat? <laughs> That's you very can, clever. You can attempt. You want to run back oh, there yeah. and grab that goat? I'm with uh, Thondon. Yeah, because I don't want to I don't want a bear to interfere with the the happenings dude, going on. Yeah. Dude, don't run. Don't run. Move don't run slowly. Move slowly. Right, I got it. Oh no. Oh, so wait a minute. So, yeah, I would have to say something like, "Hey, there's a bear," right? To, to uh, Horace. The two, the two of you notice. Horace notices. Like the two uh, of you notice. Yeah. He's pretty big. Um, yeah, he, I he, think I think I'm gonna ready my slingshot and just fire it down to the end of the hall, like right here. No. Oh. oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, just to get their attention. Okay. <laughs> Without so, saying anything, you hear a crack. Um, so, right around the time that you hear this crack, Arnie, you're like going through the the litter, um, you know, the bedroll basically that's there, um, and you find a piece of um, that flame chalk, like a stick of it. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. And then right as you've got it, you hear crack as like a, a rock basically hits. Um, as you throw that rock and it makes a loud noise, the bear like kind of, it's just like sniffing around on the ground and stuff and like scrap pulling at the ground, like maybe occasionally trying to eat like an ant. Its head like snaps up and looks in your direction. Uh-huh. Can Arnie move to check out what the snap was? Yeah, yeah. So, but, like, it's, oh, no, 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 no. These are 10 foot. <laughs> so, you're going to go half your normal distance, which is about three squares. So, that's where, where you're at. So, you see Horace there. He's definitely staring at something to the south of him, but you can't exactly tell what it is. And I'm perfectly still. Question, what is it? What is it, Horace? Are you actually saying that? Like, yeah, yeah. In, in, in whisper, character. whisper. What, what is it? What, what you looking at? What you looking at, Horace? Like, he, he can just see my eyes. Like, my eyes turn to look at him and then look back south. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> can Arnie throw the chicken from here? No, it wouldn't reach. No, that would be a really uh, far... It? What is it doing? Uh, it's sniffing around in the corner and like looking for stuff. Uh, don't, I'm gonna don't attack it. Yeah, I'm gonna slowly uh, step this way. I think. Okay. I go. Hey, what's up? What the? Oh. 
So this is kind of our chain here. <laughs> Oak and Shield's yelling to Arnie, like, hey, what's up? Arnie's yelling to Horace, hey, what's up? And by this time, you're over here grabbing the goat. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I turn back and I just like just loud enough for them to hear like for uh Arnie to hear say or whisper. well that would be loud enough for the bear to hear so uh I so, think I'm gonna take, I think I'm just gonna slowly back up a little bit more oh god <laughs> oh god so put yourself back there because right about there it catches up it doesn't do anything violent, but it starts like swatting at your lamp. Oh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the lamp, like take out the orb, and uh -huh. like see how it reacts to the orb. Um, it's gonna swat it out of your hand. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. All right, it starts eating it. Okay, then. And now its mouth is glowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Now it starts sniffing you pretty intensely for, like, other stuff, like... Can uh, I a little does bit? Does it smell the dead goat yet? Not just yet. Can Arnie, Arnie you can move and, up a little. And kill the chicken and give him the chicken. Oh, the chicken's, chicken. the chicken's freaking out right now because the chicken doesn't want to go near that bear. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I'm just going to like take out one of my rations and uh, toss it down uh, here. It'll start chewing on, like, the dried meats and fruits and stuff. Yeah. And uh, as it does that, I'm going to slowly... Can I slowly step back to here as it does it? Yeah. All right. Now, let me remove that glowing bug orb. So as soon as you two move roughly where you're at, um, Arnie and... Uh, uh, Thondon. Um, it swings around and looks kind of at both of you because one of you has a live chicken and the other one <laughs> has a goat carcass, which is relatively in, in it, you know, relative shape. And it's enough that it can definitely eat it. Um, oh, so no. It's looking around like kind of at both of you and your chicken's flipping out. And yeah, what are y'all doing? I'm, I'm going to offer it. Yeah. Or actually, uh, I'm going to, well, I can't throw the goat that. Well, I don't know. I, I'm, I could throw the goat past the bear, right? Like down hey, here. You could definitely throw the goat like Arnie. Here. What if you throw the chicken down here so that Arnie, it just starts sprinting outside so that the bear will take off after it? Arnie wants to kill the chicken and feed the chicken to the bear. Okay. So you snap the chicken's neck. I'm not going to make a roll for that. That's not a, okay. a difficult maneuver. Um, and then you're throwing the the whatchamacallit to it too, the 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 the, the, the chicken, yes. Goat. Are you guys giving it the mountain goat as well? Uh yeah, I'm gonna offer them I mean I'll throw the mountain goat toward the bear. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it kind of sits down and just starts chewing and eating. It's not really paying y'all much mind at this point. So it's, nice. uh, it's kind of a harmless bear at the moment. Uh, guys. Tasso, you're really looking to get us killed, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, toys, me. <laughs> if I really wanted to, I could have done something else. Uh, can I move back to, uh, can I move back to here and just tell Tasso what's happening? Yeah, we're at, like, free actions at this point. We're not really breaking it down, because the bear is, as for the most part, at least for the time being, has been neutralized. He's just eating away at, 
at everything y'all have. You basically given him a smorgasbord. Make sure you mark off the ration and make sure you get rid of yeah, your I chicken. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I walk over here and I uh, and I basically just shush Oakenshield and tell him, "You you absolute idiot! There is a bear up there. What the hell are you doing? How am I supposed to know? I think uh, we can go in the door while the bear is distracted." Uh, we'll Move have it. to break it down. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, Arnie's the best at doing that. Very true. But yeah. it's like 10 feet away from a bear. Yeah, yeah. But right now the bear is distracted. This is our time to move. Do you want to try to make a trap for the bear? Like a, a noose or something? Do you want to kill the bear? No. Um, I mean, we can. I mean, I'm just saying it's harmless bear. Also possible uh, companion. You want a pet bear? 100% Arnie wants a pet bear. Uh, uh, that, that's, that would be a tough one, but yeah, give it a try. Try to have, make a pet bear. Wait a second. That requires charisma, right? Arnie has the charisma. No, you don't. You have no charisma whatsoever. I'm the only one with maxed out charisma. Well, Arnie's that's a, someone on the team. Arnie's a rather charming fellow. He's a half yeah. orc, but he gets he gets negatives with people that know things about half orcs. This is a bear; it doesn't care. It doesn't go like, <laughs> okay. "Oh, he's got a stigma of being a half orc." Like it's a bear. <laughs> the bear don't care that I'm ugly. The bear doesn't what care. Is your that... charisma, Arnie. Arnie's pretty charismatic. What? What's your charisma? It's 13. It's not good at all. It's good. <laughs> that That's a good charisma. It, it is plus one. That is pretty good. Not that's, as good as 18, though. That's why we called him Arnie. He was super buff and he was charming. Like, we're like, oh, he's like Arnie, the, you know, Schwarzenegger. Oh, uh, uh, that's why. All right. So, what oh, are y'all yeah. doing? Pumping iron. I I want to break down the door and see what's on the other side because if it's hostiles, we could just rush out of the room and leave the bear to deal with it. That would be funny. That would be pretty funny and clever. Arnie is down to break down that door and run away. He is Go pretty ahead. free to quit as well. Break the, break the door down. I feel like you should stand like back here just in case. Ask and it shall be done. You guys want to break down the door and leave whatever whatever is on the other side to the bear? Hey, I heard you go from somebody and I went. Well, okay. Well, we just went on Ryan. All right. So you're going to go and bust the door down. Is this... Is this where everyone's going to be at when he busts the door down? I just want to make sure that this is the, this is what it looks like when the door gets kicked. Donden, okay. help me, help there, me, right? Donden. help me, Donden. Uh, Oaken yeah. Shield, you're, uh, are you just going to stand there? Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to move. I'm, I'm next here. to Arnie. I'm right uh, here next to Arnie. Uh, oh, I was talking about Oaken Shield. Okay. Arnie, roll your open the door. He, he did. Oh, I could sorry. do it again if you want. Mixed it. No, nope, you're good. Okay. You got it. But you can roll it if you want to, just because you love to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you did it twice, brother. <laughs> All right, nice. so the door gets kicked in. The bear definitely looks up at that because that's a loud noise and it's a little startled um so that's a thing um when you open the door um you're immediately hit with the smell of like rot and mildew there's a bunch of like 
crates and storage barrels. There's cloth there. There's some leather aprons. It's got a really, like, slimy floor. Like, it's, uh, you know, it looks like, like I said, with rot kind of there. Um, it's It smells like this was possibly, like, food storage. But, like, it hasn't been opened in a really, really long time. But like I said, there are still some crates in there, some barrels, stuff like that. Yeah, Arnie would like to check it out. Okay. I, yeah, we should go in the door and shut the door, right? We can do that. So yeah. at, th at this point, the smell is like intense, like I said. Bear. The bear is pretty much done chewing up the, um, yeah. the, the goat. But it's got the, the chicken in its mouth, and it starts heading out the door. Right, perfect. Like, oh, thank God. That stinks. So he doesn't like the foul smell. All right. So, Arnie, you're going in and searching around? Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm going in behind him. All right. There's really only enough room for, like, two of you to search. It's a pretty small, like I said, imagine, like, a walk-in freezer. That's kind yeah. of, like, the size of, of what, what we're doing here. All right. Um, t -t 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 Both of you roll a d6 for me. Okay. Uh, while they're doing that, I think I'm going to come out here and just watch the bear and okay. make sure it doesn't come back in. Okay, so you guys are searching and you're like opening like um, uh, Thond and you basically crack open like one of the barrels and it's like you see like um it's actually even past the point of like maggots and things like that like it was probably a bunch of apples that have like rotten to the point that there's like just like husk and mildew left um and don't have to turn to sludge eventually yeah it's like a sludgy thing like yeah it's gross like a gross sludge um the you guys are like overturning things and stuff like that. The um, Arnie, you basically there's a crate there, and you open the the lid of the crate, and as you open it up, um, uh, this like there's like a a, a, a big hole like nasty. Um, green slime that's basically on it and it attaches to your arm. Oh, oh. God. We are cursed when dealing with slimes. So you now have a green slime that is on your hand. What are you doing? Spitting on my hand. Arnie spit. Okay. So you... Two. Two. So as you're spitting on it um, with the acid, um, you feel the burn of acid on yourself too. You think that <laughs> this thing is acidic. Yeah. As it's like eating at your hand. And now it was on to about where your wrist was. Now it's sliding under your, your chain mail and it's crawling up your arm. So it's probably up to about the mid portion of your uh, forearm. Ah, you suck. Uh, hey, Tasso, you got a... Uh, Slime, you suck. You got a um, torch on you, right? Oaken shield. Uh, he's muted. Yeah. You got a uh, torch on you, right? Yes. You want to come over here and burn Arnie's arm? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. You want to come over here and just light Arnie's arm on fire? Sure. <laughs> okay, so mark off the torch. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you, George. <laughs> And can I put it like under his arm? Okay. 
So Arnie, uh, I'm gonna just do this. So Arnie, you take one point of damage and it's still on there. Was it, it was it hurt in the slime? The slime is literally in his chainmail on his arm. So now yeah, it's moved I... it's moved up to his shoulder at this point. And it's burning, and the slime is burning and kind of retreating away from it, but it's like under his clothes and like like up to his shoulder. I feel like how... Arnie just needs to rip off his uh Arnie, chain you take mail by now. Another point how, of damage. How help him take off his armor. Yeah, let's help him take off his armor. Yeah, good and idea. I want, and I want to still take the torch to follow the acid. All right. And kind of like kind of right, him. Right now, it's spreading so quickly that your one torch is, it can't cover the whole spot of it. Let's use the lights, the bug lights. I want to take another bug torch. Bug lights won't do anything. I want to take another you torch. Never know. And right. burn it. Like, do so it now again. you're doing two torches. Yes. All right. Arnie, you take three points of damage. Oh, God. From two torches. And All right, chill out, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm dying it is, here. It has yeah, moved, okay. moved across your body, and it is now starting down the other arm and onto your stomach. Uh-oh. Oh, it's on like his whole body now. Um, it's basically his lower waist and his head are pretty much the only things that are not. He's like he's wearing a green slime T-shirt. A nice button down that goes down. You know? uh, Arnie, I feel like you might be dying here. Can I stab it? <laughs> no, Wait a no, don't do uh, that. Don't we have a fire sword? Actually, yeah, <laughs> I do. Why don't Bye. we just like press the flat of the fire sword against the slime? Okay, take my uh, torch. I'm going to do that. So you're going to hit it with the fire sword? But I'm going to just go up to like this. Take my sword, go up to the kind of slime pole. We're just touching the slime, kind of like cut it, like strike it up, if that makes sense. Like okay, a match. Are you not torching him then anymore? Right. I'm, I'm gi yeah, I'm giving one torch to um. We're not torching it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Arnie's taking the psychotropic mushrooms. If he's going down, he's going out to help you. <laughs> All right. Immediately dies from psychotropic mushrooms. Arnie, you take five more points of damage. Oh. Mm. But you take the, the flame blade and you press it to it, and that, that blade reacts to any creature that is susceptible to fire, which this definitely is. It's actually the only thing that kills it. So as soon as you touch it to the thing, um, the entire creature, like, bursts into fire and comes off of Arnie. Um, but Arnie, yeah, you take five damage in that. Oh, God, Arnie's down. No, nah, my one. Arnie's at one. Arnie's oh, a trooper. God, Arnie's going down. Like He's at one. What, Wait. What's your health? He's at one health. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You were, you were really close to being dead there, Arnie. <laughs> Is the slime dead now? Yeah, one. Yeah, I would just went over the math. One. Yeah. Well, no, you're 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 almost dead too because you have six rounds to get green slime off of you, or it consumes you and you become a green slime. <laughs> oh wow. God, Arnie? Arnie does? Anyone does? Uh, uh, is it off of him? It's off. Yeah, it burst into flames and, and got off because of that uh, the Ooh. flame sword. 
The problem you had was the first couple of rounds that I was rolling damage for the torch, it was only doing one. And the thing has, you know, a certain amount of hit points and it, one wasn't cutting it. So is it dead? It's dead. It's consumed in oh, fire yeah. right now. So it's dead. Is Arnie still on fire? No, I'm talking it was like a burst, like a boom. And then, oh, it, okay. like, the thing got consumed, but it singed the hell out of Arnie. Hey! Burnt buddies! Hey, man. <laughs> Arnie didn't go down, though. So Arnie did. Yeah. Arnie's tough. Can he still wear his armor? Yep. Uh, he goes, yes. He, he didn't go below yeah. zero? You, you should put your chain mail back on. 100%, yeah. What was inside that crate Arnie opened besides the slime? Um, what yeah. is it? Spoiled bananas. Ooh. Hey, guys, which do you want? Uh, bananas or apples? Oh, yeah. Let's make some banana bread. Some spoiled banana bread. Yeah. No, I mean, because I have, uh, I have cure, I have, uh, purify food. Yeah, this is actually a perfect use of purified food, actually. Go uh, for it. Is it, is it like a splash effect, or is it like a single thing effect? Honestly, I'm going to have to look that up. Give me a second, uh, because... Because we are in a room entirely full of spoiled food. For the life of me, I, I have played Dungeons and Dragons for 30 years and I've never had anyone use purified food and water. So, <laughs> so you're just going to have to give me a minute to look up the rule on it. It is a oh, useless that is, that is absolutely gorgeous. I knew purified food and water would be useful at some point. Is it though? Uh, would you like a splat? Would you like a massive amount of apples? Yes. Would I like an apple or a banana? I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's the question. <laughs> All right. So it's up to you on how you want to do it. So it can make one iron ration out of something in here. All right. So like you could make like there's probably the remnants of cheese. So you could make like a hunk, a big hunk of cheese for one person that would act as a trail ration. Or you can make 12 rations that are unpreserved. <laughs> How long do uh, regular rations last? Couple days. Three days. Yeah, about two days probably. Uh how many rations do we use a day? Uh one is generally what I, I make y'all just do. Your ration is a whole day's ration. So I assume you're eating it over the course of the whole day, but it's like a you know, a military MRE. It's you know, it's three meals. In one ration. Hey, you guys want to feast on apples and bananas and just nonsense tonight? Arnie has sure. 11 rations, so... Yeah, so I'm just going to do the massive splash effect and just... What? And we're just going to get, like, a massive amount of apples and bananas. Well, no. do, me, do me a favor. Roll... Um, roll... 2d20. Okay. 34. Oh, and that 20. Yeah. So, with the spoilage and stuff in here, you could cast that spell 33 times, and that's when it will run out of, like, stuff. <laughs> I guess we don't need to worry about food anymore. For the next two days. For the next... No, guys. It'll I can make... cast it 33 times. So if we're eating... Uh, if I just do it on basic rations, 
every single time, then... Oh, hell. So I'll say that your your basic, your unpreserved rations can last three days. So in essence, there's four of you. So per casting of the spell is your rations for three days. Yeah, so... And he can do that 33 the, the times. So he's got like a days. month's worth of food. This is three months worth of food here. Yeah, it's about three months of food. It's just spoiled, nasty, rotten food that no one would eat. But when you have magic, like, it, it's something different. The only reason we need to go back to town now is to sell crap and to get Tasso's cure. And to heal. No, I have magic for that. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. Let's hang out in five and heal up. Uh yeah, I'm I'm gonna cast the thing for the food. Yeah, it's it's uh twelve fifty, so it's time for y'all to take the, the ten minute customary break, which I assume you will. Uh, yeah. That was a beautiful find. Arnie doesn't want to die. All right. Um, so y'all hang out. Well, you're not going to heal up in like the, the 10 minutes, basically, that yeah. you hang out in five. That's for sure. But you hang out, and now the question is, what do y'all want to do? So the bear is just wandering around out here, right? Right now, you don't know where the bear's at. Ah, okay. Uh, the bear I over think there. we should uh, go back over here, and from the outside, spike it up. Spike up that room. You want to make sure no one gets your rotten food? I mean, it's free food for three months. Okay, you can go and spike it up. That'll take you, you know, ten minutes, but you can definitely spike it up. And make sure you use four spikes to spike it up. Yeah, I'm using four spikes. Wait, okay. uh, if I use eight of those really... If I use, like, all of my really old, rusty spikes, will it count for the... Same amount as the new spikes. You can attempt it. Uh, now I'll just use my regular spikes. Okay. Well, if we're going to camp out for the night, Arnie suggests we go back to town, right? So we could restock on some supplies. And then, because that would basically make it a new day. Because we could get back to town by nightfall. Yeah. Or we could wait. I, I assume we're all going into the room to sleep for the night. Correct? Well, it's, it's only one o'clock in the afternoon. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, thinking, I, I'm thinking we should explore this area. Oh, wait. You have one HP, right? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe we should sleep in that room. See, that's what I'm saying. We could go back to town. Never mind. Forget that. We're not going back to town right no, now. No, I'm thinking we should sleep in number four in here, where we have the wine barrel. Uh, maybe crack open the cask, uh, have ourselves a few drinks. That would give Arnie. Yeah. That would give Arnie one uh, HP until you got some spells. Yeah, and tomorrow I'll have some spells and I'll heal. We are a self-sufficient party. Oh, my God. Almost. Almost. We need a wizard. Arnie needs a wizard. So okay, is, the, so is the plan to go back to room number four and hang out for the you day? You guys okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 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 professor. Yep. Or five. Let's stay in five. Arnie says... Not four, but five. It's because we're already no, I mean, the, uh, the room down in here. Remember? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Oh. 
Okay. Then I'm going to boop. So as you guys are walking back to G, you will notice your bear companion. You just see him out of the corner of your eye. He's headed this direction. And he like rounds the corner here and then you can't see him anymore. Uh, Something, something's maybe over we should here. Follow him. Maybe we should follow him. Like, follow him to right here. Do you all and, okay. to follow him, or do you guys want to go to the room? Follow. Yeah, let's let's follow. We need all the info we can, because we, ne we never researched this place. Well, yay do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> I shall fear no random encounter. Um, yep. All right, let me get the... Wasn't the bear the random encounter? Party token. So you guys I think come the over one to, HP is the random encounter. You come over, um, and the bear goes. And Arnie's random encounter. That's where the bear... The bear enters the cave. Did it climb up, or was it just like an easy enter? Uh, I'm he talking, just took it's, off to the left. It's about left. it's about Why twenty feet up, but it it's a bear, uh, so it can climb pretty good. So that's its cave, and I'm gonna assume this is a different cave for a cave for a different animal. Arnie will one hundred percent steal a cub. No, uh, oh my God, no, Arnie. <laughs> We're all we're all in agreement. If he angers a bear, he's doing it dealing with it on his own, right? Arnie moves the fastest, baby. You can't keep up. <laughs> we can I, trip very easily. I still want to explore the two, three, four, five. You still want to explore the places we just explored? Yeah, it's because the sign, the top thing. Message makes no sense. I want to make sure we actually cover everything. Yeah, what, what did you say again? Uh, it, you guys have the thing. It says, as agreed, the jewels of weights level is down, and the temple past the uh, acolytes cells. How you deal with the watch that watch is your own. Guys, let's go to B. B? Yeah, Arnie B. Arnie following the crew. Arnie is following the crew. Because uh, the uh, Acolytes area is most likely the temple. Arnie is and like... Probably, well, I, I feel like we should rest up before we do that. Like, we, we get some heals before we do that. Because it it's probably going to be hell. So, so you guys are, I need a decision on kind of what you're doing. Are you going back to the room or no? The other side, like this arch over here, this archway over here for, and go? explore that before we like go looking for treasure from a random dwarf message. I'm asking what you're doing in the immediate future. Uh, you guys want to go to the other archway down here? Sure. Yes. Sure. Uh. Ain't no rest for the wicked. I think the uh. acolyte spells are below the wasp waspness we took out, right? Or did we already go there? So, um, I don't. I don't feel like it's gonna be in the uh, in the uh, wall. I feel like it's gonna be further in the canyon. Okay. Because unless blacksmith tools and uh, oh wait no yeah unless blacksmith tools and a wine cask are jewels huh okay yeah why don't we explore this place and then. Uh, then I'm going to have to test a theory when we get back to the room. So, uh, I'm not going to have my lamp 
Wait. We we can't ever turn like light off with these uh sacks, can we? No. We can always put it. Could Arnie eat one of those since the bear wanted Why? to eat one? Ar- the bear ate it. I'm talking it's edible. It's it's a bug gland. So it might not taste very good, but it, I'm talking you can eat it. Yeah. Arnie wants to eat a bug gland. It's, it's free light. Okay. Arnie doesn't use light anyway. Crunch, crunch, oh crunch, crunch. You eat it. it you've got, it's like if you eat a glow stick. So your mouth is <laughs> kind of glowing. Hey, who has that last bug sack thing? John, you have it? I had one. Arnie had one. Did someone else have one, or did I just have two of them? The bear ate one. Okay, so I had two of them. Okay, I'm fine with that. All right, are are y'all planning on going down into this area? Yes. Yeah. All right. So you come, and it's got a, uh, a like I said, another archway. Um, it's you open up into the the archway, and you kind of like start shining some light down the halls, and um, it is pretty um, grim, is what I would say. So. Like a lot of dead bodies or something? Yeah. Well, that... It's kind of, uh, it's bare, uh, but, you know, it's bare walls, it's dirt, there's a lot of dead leaves across the floor, um, and as you start to, the party starts to step into the room, um, a chill goes up everyone's spine almost simultaneously. Oh, God, ghosts. The there's just a feeling in here of unease and uh, a, an unholy nature to this place. Uh, how about we come in here some other time when I have protection of evil? Oh, we could. Oh no. Kill it. Arnie has one HP. Uh, I have three HP. You two are the only ones here with any HP. The both of us are paramount to wizards at level one, except we are both close range, or at least Arnie is. I could reach over some. Arnie could reach over somebody. Yeah. So what are y'all doing? Fine, let's go in if you want to go in. Let's find somewhere to rest and then rest for the night. I'm going to go with what the majority decision is. Uh, I mean, if it's uh, dangerous, uh, we can wait until, you know, people are uh, healed, I guess, right? Yeah. Okay, majority decision. So we're going back to the room with the Ryan bed, I guess. Seven looked decent, correct? Uh, no, eight was actually eight okay. The room. Okay. You guys want to go back to the uh, room that we've been sleeping in? And sure. just wait out the day? Sure. Alright, and sleep it off? Yeah. Alright. So you guys are going to go over here and have a snooze. And Uh, check on the wine. Check on the wine as well. Before we go to sleep, uh, can I open up that wine cask and just... uh, What do I have? I have something that's clean-ish. I haven't used... Uh, anyone got like a pole that they haven't used? I have so a that pole arm. Like, muddle the wine. 
I play. I don't. Whatever. I'm just going to use the, uh, like, the staff end of my uh, wood axe. And I'm just going to, like, dip it into the wine to, like, all the way to the bottom and just jimmy around in there to see if it, like, clinks against anything. Mm, it's a good thought, but no. Okay. Arnie wants to drink some of the wine and then go go to sleep. All okay. Right. Arnie gets a buzz on and uh, and then goes to bed. <laughs> I assume you guys are setting up a watch. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll All take right. the first one. I'll take the last. Uh, I guess I'll take the second. Uh, it, we're supposed to have four watches, right? Well, you got four people. It's hard to hard to divide that. Um, so I guess Arnie will be third watch. Yeah, yeah. All okay. right. All right. So you all sleep uh, through the night. Um, no disturbances. So you, you guys have been very lucky today on the random rolls. Um, no disturbances that. So everyone, if you've lost one, you get a hit point back for resting. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, and what oh, spells are you, are you memorizing? Uh, I'm memorizing protection from evil. Okay. Uh, to the West, uh, cure light wounds. And yeah, three cure light wounds. Okay. And are you using any of the cure light wounds right now? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna use. Let me. Do one uh, on yourself. You should do one on yourself and one on Oni. I can't do one on myself because my max is six right now. Because I got. What even happened to me to have to make my max be six again? Blood loss. Yeah, blood loss. Arnie is uh, always welcome to double hit points. So yeah, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it to Arnie. So uh, so roll two d six, take the best one, and add one. Five. So five, five hit points back, Arn. Uh, anyone else missing health? I'm uh, up. I'm down, but I'm good. Uh, uh, Arnie, what's your max health again? Fourteen. Yeah, I'm gonna heal you again. Ooh, glass cannon. <laughs> so, uh. Three. Oh, you. Yeah, three. Yeah, okay. Nice. Hey, no complaints here. Okay, so I've got one more heal left for whoever needs it. And we have protection from evil for that. Scary place. How long does protection from evil last? A uh, while. Um, let me see. It lasts two hours. Oh, okay. So we can just cast. We can just pop it on when we enter there. Okay. Well, it, it, um, it the range the range is you. Oh, it's only me. Yeah, there, there's another spell later on called Protection from Evil 10 foot. <laughs> so there's Protection oh, from God. Evil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does Protection from Evil do again? So it'll give you, um, what is it? It'll give you a plus one to hit. I'm sorry, no, I'm, yeah, completely wrong. Gives you plus one to your saving throws versus special abilities from creatures. So it will affect creatures that are of a uh, different alignment from you. Oh, that's beautiful. Wait, so it even affects neutral? Yeah. Oh, that is, that is so good. Let's move so, into let's move into ten. Yeah. Okay, so it gives you plus one saving throws versus all their attacks and special abilities and things like that. 
and um, what is it? Creatures are a minus one to hit you when you have it up. <laughs> and if creatures are enchanted creatures, constructed creatures, or summoned creatures, um, they cannot attack you uh, unless you attack them. They can't attack you in melee. So what you're saying is uh, I can just cast it and no construct can attack me until I absolutely destroy them with turn undead. Uh, I would consider turn undead a uh, an aggressive action. So once you yeah. do the turn undead, if it doesn't work, then they would be able to respond in kind. Okay. <laughs> That is beautiful. So uh, we're going to 10, right? Yeah, 10. Actually, yeah. hold on. Oh, God. So the actual reading of the spell is the spell additionally prevents creatures from attacking the caster in melee, though they can still make range attacks. But it says, if the caster engages a creature in melee, this protection is broken, though you still get the bonuses from above. So yeah, if you turned undead, it couldn't respond by attacking you in melee. You have perfect to attack it in melee. That's beautiful. That's perfect for the bear. No, the bear is a beast. It's not a construct. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I didn't know it was only constructs. Yeah. Well, enchanted things, constructs, and summoned creatures. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I heard the right. creatures part. So, to uh, ten. Your, your plan is to go to 10? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, I will move you back there. It is now... 8 a.m.? Uh, 7, 10 in the morning. Okay. All right. Uh, the second we step in here, I'm going to use uh, Protection from Evil. Okay. And uh, what was the other thing? Uh, I'm going to take out my uh, glowing bug. Wait, is the glowing bug orb still glowing? Yes, yes it is. Oh, okay. I'm going to take that out and stick it in my lantern. Just okay. that I'm not carrying a bulbous sack. So you basically come into this large room. Remember, each of these squares are 10 feet, so yeah. it's roughly 30 by 30 with two hallways going in different directions. Um, and like I said, it's got this feeling of unease here and like a, a palatable aura of, you know, uh, vileness and and evil uh you guys want to set up to the 10 it's just one room right uh it's it has two turn offs right here and here what could go wrong yeah i guess we just move through right okay uh i think we should look up towards the ceiling as we do okay so you're gonna look up so you're walking nope. into the room, looking at the ceiling. Okay, so there's nothing up there. Okay, good. No, I'm, I'm asking, is that what you're doing? Yes. Okay, so y'all are walking into the room while staring at the ceiling. I'm Arnie gonna is, look up. You guys look, like, around. You know what? Arnie is actually crab crawling, so he can only see the ceiling. So... All right, so we've got some cautious people. <laughs> so you walk into here, um, and you're looking up at the ceiling. Um, all right. That's when shit's probably going to go sideways. Yeah. Um, what I need everyone to do, uh, pull your figures onto the board, but I want you to put them up here. Oh, no. In seven? Yeah. That doesn't sound very good. Uh, 
Hey, perfect. No, no. So I'm going to, if you look at this, this is kind of a here is kind of a mirror reflection of here. So you're not actually up here, but I just need a room. We're going to consider these five foot squares um, okay. for the purposes of things. Um, what I need everyone to do is roll a D6. Um, what is it? The group, the two that were looking at the ceiling, you need, uh, don't roll a one, two, or three. Oh, no. All right. So this time, it's everyone but the human who uh, is not as surprised. So oh, no. coming from this direction down this hall, you hear a clamoring and a clanking as uh, skeletons rush into the room. Skelly boys. Armed if to the, only I armed to the teeth with swords and shields and like chain mail that's basically hanging off their body. Um, and they start pouring into the room. Actually, they, they would have to pour into the room more like this. So they're coming into the room. Ooh. So I'll move them back a just lot. a little. Um, give you all a little bit of space. But we got to roll to see who goes first. Um, Chris, go ahead and roll uh, D6 for initiative. Sure. Uh, oh, not bad. Well, I guess you got a six, then yeah. Arnie suggests we pull out and then let them come out through one doorway. Well, they're already here, though. Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, we. Oh, because they're coming. Guess, they're gonna have to come out through right here. So if we yeah, pull but out, that's still a ten foot area. Ten. We can move three thirty feet. You can. Oh, uh, could the team not? They could, I thought move, the team could be, they could in theory move two spaces. Uh, they can move back to about here if they if they you know wanted to. Okay. You, could, you could keep it down to about four of them, and it would only be two of you getting attacked. Oh, that that actually. Arnie would also be able to to attack at the end of the phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in theory, so. yes. And then we could move back again, and then it would yeah, be a that, final. Yeah, that actually wouldn't be that bad an idea. So, All right. Are you all going to pull so back to there? So come heal? Uh, no. no. I'll, I'll adjust. adjust. Opposite. I'll adjust. Oh. Is this what you're planning on doing, though, right here? This yeah. little thing? All right. So yes. Yeah. Down so at what, 10. So I'm going to leave you right there, and I'm just going to make it what it would look like. So you would have four skeletons lined up like that you would have two in the background wait so, a Arnie, second. you you wouldn't be able to move you would still be like that because that's how tight that doorway would be okay. <laughs> and you guys would be like that um uh, come the turn just, just wondering but uh silver affects skeletons right you don't know you can try it <laughs> so you want to put a bunch of your silver coins in a sack and just beat them with the sock? Uh, no. If you remember, I have fifty silver sling balls. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Wow. Um, you guys get to go first. So go ahead and um, uh, the two dwarves go ahead and make your attacks. I assume you're attacking when these guys come up. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. You know it. Evo. Oh, man. So <laughs> the eight is going to nope. miss. The 18 will definitely hit. So this one is crushed basically under the might of a dwarf swing with a, uh, like I said, a crushing blow from that magical sword as it uh, glows and screams through the air. Um, are you making your slingshot? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the slingshot with the. Uh, you get a plus one because you're in close. Ooh. 
15. That'll hit. So you crank down on uh, one of the skeletons that's in front of you. Which one do you want to hit? Uh, I think this one would still get the uh, bonus, right? Yeah. This one? Yeah, that one's going to hit that one. All right. You take, take a this, large... Take this one out to try to like limit the thing for Thondon. Limit the damage for Thondon. Because both of them are going to be able to attack him. Yeah, I, I've already I've already labeled it. Okay. I'm not unlabeling right. it. Okay. So, so the silver doesn't do anything. My my uh, it hits him. Arnie he seems damaged. Arnie's roll twenty. Arnie's roll twenty is going a little slow, so he he couldn't see that yet. So uh, they're going to attack before you do, Arnie, because you attack last. Yes. So uh, what about? Oh, yeah, fine then. All right. This one will move up on top, so this one's just going to disappear. And this one's going to move up. So both of the dwarves roll two attacks against you. Okay. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, both of them are fine, I think. You're fine. Yeah. So these four things are just clattering, and you guys are basically locking shields and forming like a tiny little like steel wall barrier steel wall. of dwarfness. Um, Arnie, go ahead and make your attack with your uh, pole arm. That will <laughs> definitely hit, and that will crush that one. Mark one skeleton down for the Arnie army. All right. Next. Um, Oak and shield, roll initiative. <laughs> That's y'all. Oh. <laughs> Tazo, you have been getting very good rolls on this initiative, man. We, you have been getting very suspiciously good rolls. We cannot call it Tazoing a roll after pretty soon. <laughs> no, we right. can, we'll still call it that. It's just. So Don't it's y'all's turn. The whatever you want to do. The opposite effect. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to attack the non, uh, the one that's still at full health. Okay. That will miss. Uh, I'm gonna sling the one that's damaged. Sling it with the silver balls again. That will hit, and that will knock it down into a pile. Oh, so they have six health. Okay. At least, at most, at least. Uh, yeah, at most. All right. Um, Thondin, what are you doing? I will swing at the one right, uh, like, diagonal from me. Okay. Uh, here we go. Oh, yeah. That's... <laughs> So you, you swing dragon heart and like hit it and there's a bright flash of light as it crumples to the ground. Nice. And now it's there, Arnie go. Can, Arnie can hit that one, right? No, but Arnie doesn't no. go yet. So it's going to yeah. move up because they're pretty mindless. This one's going to move over. Both of my dwarves give me rolls uh, to see if you don't get hit. You guys are both fine. These are very ineffectual. So Arnie, go ahead and give it a clubbing. Let me finish it off there. Uh, that'll do it. You pull our beast. And uh, I'm just going to assume the other one's going to die. You guys have decimated these, so we'll call it a combat at that. Um, take out the four hit point skeleton. Oh, there are four hit points. Okay, then. All right. So you guys managed to, to mop up those skeletons. And you guys are back to right there. That's that's your position. Um, you, takes a second or two for you guys to kind of gain your breath. But uh, you guys are up and ready to go. You want to split into two and two and check out both of these spots? 
uh, I'm gonna get my uh, I'm gonna get my silver balls back. The how many did you fire? Two. Yeah, two. Okay, you find them both. They're led. They're huh. lodged in one's in the skull of it, and one's in like the sternum. Yeah, let's check out. Uh, Go right. Find, how about we search these skeletons to see if we can find any identifying info of like what's going on here? Why there are necromantic summonings happening here? Yeah, yeah. Why are there skeletons here? That's that's a good question. Alex, can we check the tunnel where they came from? You can come you here, guys, and with your lantern, I'm, you can see that and that. Oh, they, they, came from, they came over here where 11 is, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, let's, let's go there. Uh, uh. I really want to search the skeletons, though. Go ahead. Do you guys want to go ahead while I search the skeletons? Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to search the skeletons because. Okay. A, they could have somewhat decent gear on them, possibly. A. Chainmail, at least. And B, they, they just, might... Huh? They know they don't have good weapons or anything. Yeah, but they still have stuff that you could, like, melt down into scrap. Possible. You're correct, yeah. Check them. Check them, and we'll check out the stuff over by 12. 11. No, no harm in that. Yeah, I'll search the uh, I'll search the skeletons that are like in a pile right here. Okay. So yeah, you're searching over the skeletons. One thing that you notice on the skeletons um, is that um, the the swords and the things are all dinged up, and the armor, and it looks like it has taken repeated abuse, like someone has beaten the tar out of these skeletons. Like they, the armor is extremely beat up, extremely. The swords are incredibly dinged up. So they don't have any real distinguishing marks beyond that, but you know, that's where they're at. As the rest of the group moves into number 11, um, you notice when you get over there that the lamp's light is not is only casting dim light. Like it should be brighter in here than it actually is, but it's incredibly uh, dim. It's actually messing with all three of your um, dark visions because your eyes they can't switch. Like they can't switch into infravision, but it's still really really dim um, for your light vision. So it's just kind of messing with your head a little bit um, because it's just kind of unnaturally dark in here. Let's put out the light. Yeah. We can all, all of the three of us could see in the, in the dark. Yeah. So, um, yeah. In this room, none of y'all can see. Really? Hmm. Huh. Uh, huh. If light only boy. I had no light. Horus, light boy, bring in the light. Uh, are these are these weapons like? Are they at least in a condition where I can like sell them for scrap? You or have possibly them could, down? but carrying them, carrying all these weapons is problematic. Yeah, fair enough. I'll just leave them there and. uh I'll walk into 11. Okay, so he Brandy. comes in, and you guys can see, but like I said, it's in very dim light, even with the lantern full force in the room. 
Can I check the walls for like chat, like uh, hidden hidden doors? Sure, you can do that. So that'll take you a few minutes. Anyone else want to do anything while he's doing that? Uh, can we see what's actually in this room? It, like I said, beyond the the kind of a bare walls, and it looks like there's like little like um, niches carved where six roughly human sized bodies could stand in. Can oh. can, can Arnie smile? I can't and, what this is. Oh my light. god! Could Arnie open his mouth and see light coming out of it? Um, very, 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 very dim light. <laughs> Okay, good. Arnie, Arnie would like to ask Horace for another ball because he has two, correct? No, I have one. The bear ate the other. <laughs> You're not turning into a spotlight. Arnie would love to be a spotlight. But uh, I'm I'm gonna like in game tell the rest of them that these skeletons were most likely training dummies by what I can tell. By who is the question? Hmm? Can Arnie follow Horace and search over the letters? That is the question. Who was using them as training dummies? Yeah, and what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. So what was that, Arnie? Could Arnie follow the light and uh, search for any treasure? You can do that. So he's searching for treasure, one searching for rooms. What are the other two of you doing? Anything? Uh, I'm just going to see, like, how the uh, skeletons were were brought, you know, like brought around here, I guess, something like that. Uh, they were in the niches in the walls, like the six... Uh, the best way to put them is like you know in like Star Wars where they had those uh, tra- uh, charging slots for the droids. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. So, or like uh, Borg regeneration chambers. You know. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So they were probably just standing there, but as soon as you guys came into view, they just came and rushed you. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, they were had to be guarding something. I would think, right? No, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm checking the yeah hidden doors or anything. Oh snap! So um, Arnie was look or er, Arnie was just remembering the uh, the flame chalk note, right? And but it he, doesn't um, work when, with light in the room. No, yes, oh, but wait, 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 Arnie, you have the, you have that sword. You have the yin and yang sword. Yes, yes, it's light. Yes. It casts 16 feet of light. Yes, it does. Does Would that do anything to the light in the room? A purple light. It has purple light. Yeah, so, basically. like This is something your GM has to think about, because I, I know what I, I had planned for that yin-yang sword. Um, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. So I'm going to pause here, uh, give your GM uh, a minute or two to think about this, and uh, use the restroom, and then... I'll tell you what happens. All right. All right. So, so guys, so guys, this is, this is, well, I, this is so what I'm, to, so I'm reading. That. So, so I'm reading the flame chalk note. It's over in the handout section under the, uh, the character sheet. Uh-huh. And it, uh, it says that, uh, how you deal with the wasps is your own concern. I'm, I'm assuming that the wasps in the other room had, are, are those wasps. But it says there's jewels in the in the um, the bag. So there is something valuable in that bag we could go and get. It says, as agreed, the jewels await you two levels down in the chamber past the Akalot cells. Uh, how you deal with the wasps is down is up to your concern. Huh. Okay, so there might be a subterranean level to it, but I I highly doubt it. I'm thinking I'm that, but in, so I'm thinking the acolyte could be the person who was the mage, and if it's 
the chamber passed the Icolet, the uh, two but levels it, down. Down, which would be subterranean. If it was Acolyte, one level. The Acolyte down, was on the second. Yeah, you're right. So it would be down one level. I'm thinking that those uh, two levels down. It could be from the roof. I mean, three, two. Uh, maybe. I mean, you I, have to I, go down somewhere, right? There has to be a down. Yeah. Well, we're, we got it up on a ledge also. Like you see, there's a mountain over by two, three, and four, and five. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel, I feel like it was in four. Like in I four is like super high. In map B. Yeah. Okay. We could see. Yeah. We could definitely see. I'm just trying to crack the riddle. But uh, I will be right back. Perfect. Anybody there, Chris? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so I'm also thinking we could probably go over to 12 as well. Yeah, that sounds good. That's the next plan of action, probably. Yeah, 100%. I shouldn't have eaten that light thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, only, if, only if it backfires is it bad. <laughs> yeah, really. I'm back. Yo, yo. Switchback trail was over on B, correct? Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Hello, hello. Uh, right. Gage ran to the restroom. Okay. Everybody else is here, though. Yeah. So. I'm here. You're going to turn that light on in here, correct? E Yes, Arnie is correct. Um, Horace is still in the restroom. He has a light as well. I'm With the yin yang I'm more interested in that. Um, the the uh, yin yang. Yeah, the heart, I think it was called heart. Uh, what was it? The heart of balance. I called. It, I called it the yin yang sword. So what was it called? The heart of balance. Because it had, it was like half obsidian. It had like a, an obsidian and a pearl mounted on one on each side of it. Yeah. Uh, what's that? And it could cast a, a spell of, it could cast a ball of light or a ball of darkness. Correct. And that was like what it did. And it was a, it was a plus sword, plus it, it could do light and dark. And it was perfect for Arnie, so I kept that one. So, um, interestingly enough, you click on the light on the sword, and um, all of a sudden the room lights up, like bright. There we go. And... You, the sword starts to like shake in your hands, like it's like quivering, and you see, um, it's almost like the darkness is trying to eat at the light. Like tendrils of blackness are basically like coming into the light, um, and it looks like it's almost consuming it, and it's headed towards that sword. What yeah, do Arnie, pull out, pull back, pull back. Yeah, I'm putting away the sword. This is an ordinary darkness. This is magic darkness. So you start to try to, like, pull the sword back to put it in the wait, sheath. Wait, wait, wait. Before I could put it away, could I? can I see anything around? Could Arnie see anything? Or uh, Arnie wants to drop the sword. Arnie wants to drop the sword. Why? It's going to kill the sword. Okay. Let it fight. 
you you drop the sword and put it on the ground. And as soon as you do that, the room goes pitch black. Mm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I'm going to leave the room. No, shine the light. I need to find my sword. There's no literally... light is happening in this room right now. Yeah, All light no. is gone. I'm leaving the room. <laughs> Arnie searches for the sword. He's not it, leaving. It's still there. Yeah. Can he grab it? All right. Okay. Yeah. He has it. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm back. moving back here because I, I knew it was going to happen. So, oh, yeah. what's happening to the two dwarves in there? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still there. I'm just, uh, yeah. well, I, I guess, well, we can't see in this dark. This is uh, magic darkness. Yeah. Um, Super special darkness. Uh, yeah, special darkness. Ouch. Uh, is there, uh, so I guess, can we go to the next room? Uh, actually, uh, Tasso, you're out too. Uh, is Elevador out? No. Is everyone else out? Yeah, yeah, we're all we're all left. Well, fuck chickens, and I just walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm what I'm gonna do is, uh, hey guys, uh, can the dwarves just like put up their shields like right here? So is is everyone coming out of the room? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, Arnie, when you come out of the room and you look at the sword, it's now, it doesn't have like a black side and a white side. It is both of the sides. The gems are now black. God damn it, Army. And the blade has a slight purple glow. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I guess it's just the dark blade now. You don't you don't know what happens. <laughs> like something happened. Um. So what I'm gonna do is. Wait, wait, gonna... wait, wait. What was the dark side of the sword? He used to be like a pearl. So one of one side of his sword had like an obsidian, a smooth obsidian. Let's go back in. And the other side yeah. had a gem in the hilt. That was uh, a pearl, and that was kind of what it is. Now it's too. It's a black it's, pearl? it's a pearl, but it's a black pearl. Yeah. yeah. Can I roll to see what the like culture would think is? That you have no idea. Arnie okay. was to go back in with the sword and shield. He has a shield too. I I happy. I have your theory. What if it's in that room and the dark side of the sword are connected somehow? That sword was pulled from a long ways away. It's possible, but uh, do you guys mind if I just test a theory real quick? Well, Arnie wants to go back into 11. Okay. Before you do that, though, can I test a theory that requires the dwarves to be in defensive positions? What? What's your plan? Basically, I want to collect, like, the bones from a single one of the skeletons and toss it back into the room. Because I think what that room is, is it's literally just a regen room for all necromantic things. And the reason the darkness was trying to force out the light is because it's like constantly fueling necromantic darkness into that room. Okay. Do you guys want to try it, or do you want to just let Arnie go well, back in? What's the try? What do you? What are they going to try? Uh, I'm going to see if the skeleton reforms itself and attacks us again. Let's see what's in twelve first. 
<laughs> and then we can do that. Because then what then I'm thinking is, X. if that does happen, then if one of us dies, we can just toss the corpse in there. Much like Pet Cemetery, they won't come back like they were. I mean, you're right, but... Eh. So, you guys want to go to 12? Sure. Yeah, let's do that. So, Arnie, you're not going back into 11? Uh, I'll do that on the way back out. Okay. All right, so y'all can head into 12. Arnie's mind is fickle. Okay, so you open up 12. Or walk into 12. Um, your lights do work in here, you know, within the, the normal way that they do. So when you come in, the walls are, um, like, they are defaced and, and befouled. Um there's um, bas reliefs that are all over the wall that don't make sense. Like they just don't make any logical sense on how, how or what they are. They don't. They don't. They don't, almost don't seem to follow like the rules of geometry. In the center of um, the room is uh, what's called a what is it a, center, a cenotaph which is like, uh, you got to imagine a, an octagonal base with like a hemisphere on top of it. Yeah. And it's, and it's covered in profane writing. So it is covered in like the language of evil. Like, so the language of like demons and devils. Right. No one understands oh. infernal, right? No one understands no. that kind of a language. So, um, can I can I take out some like a some ink and like one of my parchment and uh, copy it down to uh, have someone uh, translate it when we get back to town? Sure. If you want to spend some time writing it down? Yeah, I don't mind. That's gonna take maybe thirty minutes. Huh. So while the the cleric is is uh, writing down all the information, what's everyone else doing? Uh, Stanton, glowing by the by hill. Okay, so that's what you're doing. Anyone else? Um, just I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't. You know, I, I don't understand anything that's going on right on the wall. Uh, probably just like checking the structure of the wall of the of the room well they might be evil but they know how to set up a good corner <laughs> like their craftsmanship is pretty on point i'm gonna have to say uh, the worst kind of evil craftsman all right arnie what are you doing hanging tight just chilling okay yeah So, Horace, when you're over there and you're doing your writing and stuff like that, um, as you're nearing the, the cenotaph to, like, write down some of the script and everything, it radiates an aura of cold. Hmm. I'm not going to touch it, but it's interesting. It is interesting. Does it radiate an aura of cold like the uh, like the dwarven artifact in the pond? No, this radiates a, uh, an aura of cold of like um, Evil? it's trying to drive the soul out of your body. Oh, the best kind of cold. The absolute best. Okay, then. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm. Um, I'm good. <laughs> All right. 
So that's what y'all have. Where do you want to go now? Arnie would like to go back to 11. Yeah, that seems kind of like a uh, some kind of spiritual wound. Uh, while he's doing that, can I just toss one of my uh, <coughs> one of my um, pill bugs onto that uh, shrine thing? Okay, you toss a bug onto it, and the bug starts crawling around on it. Okay, I'm gonna take my bug back. Okay. So, Arnie, you go back into 11, and it's pitch black in there, but you can see. Uh Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, that is... What does Arnie see? That sword. Arnie would like to know what Arnie sees. He still sees a plain room, but he can see it. Arnie, you do know what that sword became, right? It became something I would like. That sword now allows you to see through the magic spell dark. Well, I would walk in. Okay. And Tasso's blind, I'm guessing? You are blind, Tasso. Yeah. <laughs> so, Arnie, you can see, right? Yep. Touch Arnie's hand. I want to touch Arnie's for a second. Arnie dodges it. <laughs> Arnie, come on, we're doing science here. <laughs> okay. So... Arnie, um, you get a tingle in the back of your neck and it feels like something's like, it's like uh, someone's like doing their light fingers up your spine and into your brain. (laughs) (laughs) How about you leave the room? (laughs) Oh, is that when... uh... Oakenshield touched his hand? No, this is just in general. Can Oakenshield see by touching his hand? Is Are you going to allow Oakenshield to grab your hand? Uh, yes. Okay. Hey, Oakenshield. Actually, give me two seconds. I need to look at something. <laughs> I got it. I just got a really bad feeling. Yeah, uh, that blade is now, I think, A, possessed by a demon, and B, grants complete night, like, complete dark vision instead of just your normal uh, predator vision. That's what I think that blade has become. Um... Uh, what is it? Nothing happens when he touches you. Um, real quick, um, Gage is correct in the fact that this is not your like infra vision. This is vision. Like you just see in the dark. Like you can see colors. You can see things in the dark. Like you see in the dark. Yeah. Hey, hey, Oni. Should I write that down somewhere? Yeah, yeah. that's that now become a complete On the sword. Dark vision. A perfect dark vision. Hey, hey, Oni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, can I take the sword for one second? Arnie, you hear in the back of your head, don't let him touch me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you guys don't head. hear it. You guys don't hear it. So you guys no. can't see anything. But it's possessed by a demon now. Oh my god. <laughs> I am oh. no it says I am so, yours to wield. You have made me. So 
Oni sword. Arnie's sword is a demon now, but only he can hear it. And it's probably going to tell him, hey, oh. murder people for me. Let me bathe in the blood of the innocents. Arnie, can I have the sword? All right. No. Shh. Give him a second. Because he, he can have mental conversations with his, uh, his sword. <laughs> so it just says... You have made me. You may name me, and I will serve you. I get to name the sword? Yeah. Ooh. Hmm. I think it's a dark blade now. Like, it's... Steve. Steve. God damn. Steve the sword. <laughs> God S T E V E. Yeah, Steve. All right. GM gets some veto rights. Give it a cool name. Give it a cool okay. short name. All right. Uh, hmm. Let's go. I might need some time on this. How about um because of your newfound religion? You could it could be Crom Shadow. Ooh. Hmm. What Something about like you can always change it, but just a suggestion. All right. Honestly, I was thinking the dark Ooh, rain. I got it. So what like about careless whisper? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take oh that. That'll God. work. Uh, George Michael, we'd be so proud. All right. Nice. So, Careless Whisper. That's pretty So, good. you get the strong feeling from it, Arnie, that um, the sword the sword is uh, in love with you. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Careless Whisper fits, then. <laughs> Skip like five years into the future of the campaign and Arnie's married his sword. <laughs> but you also have a feeling that she might be a jealous mistress, so. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, hey, uh, can I detect anything from the sword whatsoever? Uh, no, especially because you're not in the room with it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh -huh. So, Arnie. So, didn't he already say no to letting you have the sword? The sword is now it uh, it can cast darkness once a day, as it did before. And if you're holding it, you can see perfectly in the dark, and even artificial right. darknesses. Or at least the artificial dark... I'll let you say, you can see in the artificial darkness created by the sword. And this room is the artificial darkness created by the sword? Uh, this was its creation spot. So uh, it's okay. got a little bit of a tie to here. Um, so, Oni... It will, hold on, we're not done yet. Oh, God. So, Arnie, I'll give you um, two choices. Um, would you rather it be more offensive or defensive? Offensive. Okay. Arnie is fully offensive. That's true. You're just... You have a crap defense, so I didn't know if you would want to go that route. Well, that's true. I mean, I mean, glad. Yeah, I'll go full glass cannon. Whatever. Full glass cannon. Okay. All right. So, uh, what is it? It will. Um, it's now a, a plus two plus two <laughs> instead of a plus one plus one. But. <laughs> Yeah, I feel I feel a large butt coming. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it well, hold on. 
it also will allow you to do um, times three damage on a backstab. Nice. Oh, God. <laughs> but it will kill anyone that gets close to you, right? But um, two, two kind of restrictions are, one, it wants you to backstab people. <laughs> like, the backstab thing. Oh. Um, it, it lives for that, and if you don't do it on occasion, it might get upset. And like I oh. said, um, it's a jealous lover. You 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 probably don't want to use other weapons when it's around. Oh no! <laughs> so Arnie can't use his pole arm anymore, is what you're saying? But I don't need it. I didn't this say is Arnie. a plus two attack, and it does the same damage. It shouldn't do the same but damage. It, the pole arm does more. Pole arm does a d10, whereas the sword does a d8. So, well, plus two. Yeah, the plus two. Yeah, it can do. Uh, but roughly. it doesn't have the reach that the pole arm has. Yeah, it doesn't have reach. That's a big thing. Very true. Very true. Very true. But I get but, the next. Uh, I get the next. Also, I've just been wondering since dwarves are like our height do we even need reach when they're at the front but yes. you you need a reach weapon you can't it, it i'm talking you gotta remember like these are five foot squares generally uh, yeah fair you're enough. gonna be pretty far away from someone um uh, all right so it's basically 11 so i'm gonna go ahead and call it here with that little uh, lovely set of surprises um and, and interesting ending uh but let me do uh, a little bit of experience because you did get some uh not a lot but some so my i feel like when it gets jealous it's going to kill one of us or it just won't yeah. do good damage <clears throat> But, uh. Hey, Professor. What's up? That's just twice now. What's that sword? You know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? The last I campaign have... I had with him. I have track record with <laughs> possessed swords. <laughs> how many how many times has a sword become possessed in your campaigns well this is the second campaign and it happened twice <laughs> i feel like i'm probably at one point going to get a possessed mace i don't know why but i feel like that's going to be a thing that happens Arnie will love Careless Whisper forever. <laughs> yeah, but you'll really long for your uh, your uh, pole arm. And not if Arnie point. sells it. Actually, I just had an idea. Could I modify that pole arm into a really, really long mace? No. <laughs> No, ah, uh, come on. I, I want a long-range blunt weapon. Sorry, that's the restrictions of being a cleric. Part of part of the job. If you get to use everything, then why are fighters good? Why are dwarves good? If they, if you can use every weapon they can use, you just get every weapon they get plus magic. magic. <laughs> so you know, that's what they get. That's their thing. Yeah. All right, so everyone's going to get 50 tonight. Remember your 10% bonus, unless you're Arnie. So 55 <laughs> for those. That includes six skeletons, one fire beetle, one green slime, and one black bear. 
address needs 7,000 and about 7,600 more HP. I yes. only need like 1250 more. You got to get to a town so you can trade in all those uh, gems and things and get your XP for gold. And we got to go to the wasp thing and get the uh, the bag. Oh, yeah, the, the, the gems that they left behind. Yeah. I, I really feel like it's not that one. Well. Because we if it were we don't try. down, it would be subterranean, and there are no entryways to the to a subterranean area in there. That's why I, I want to go back to two. That's why I want to go back to two, because we did not check uh, four and five for hidden doors or traps. Oh, yeah, fair. Arnie understands your thinking. However, bag. Oh, yeah, um, I... I forgot to put my uh, rations there. All right. Well, then we'll call it here, um, and I will see y'all same bat time, same bat channel next week, well, all thanks. right? Thanks, Ryan. Uh, are we doing uh, Mondays now? No, no, still Tuesday. The, okay. the debate got canceled, so I'm, I'm good because I'm going to... Yeah. Election night will probably have to shift to another time or something like that because I'm going to want to watch the results. So, okay. Uh, granted, we're probably not going to get results that night, but I'm going to want to watch it. So, okay. All right. I'll talk to you all later. All right. Bye. Oh, Bye. thank you for uh, making the accommodations, even though your AC was out. I appreciate that. No problem. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sleeping over here because I don't want to sleep in the hot. So, <laughs> yeah. 100%. All right. Later, guys. See you. See you.